Hello and welcome to the first lesson of the DriveDM tech training series. These videos are available on YouTube and also uh, within the Drive Academy. Um, you can watch them here, but if you want to take the test, you'll need to go to either your certification portal or through ours uh, at elearning.mydrive.com. We're going to cover a lot of things in this course, but it shouldn't be too painful. We're going to go through how to install and configure a DriveDM system. Uh, an in-house DriveDM system and we'll also talk a little bit about how to connect it to the cloud and how to connect Drive Image to DriveDM. So you can watch all the videos on your own pace or one by one. Um, this beginning one is going to be an overview of the product and then we'll go into how to configure it and troubleshoot it in subsequent videos. So DriveDM is a browser-based document management system it's based off its own object-oriented framework which allows us to store a high volume of data and have a quick rate of retrieval for that data. It's also a very secure, easy to use system um, and integrates perfectly with Active Directory and with the MFP via Drive Image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as a user. I have a user named B. Hill, and I'm going to use my Active Directory credentials here to log in. Uh, you see that I've gone to localhost and 8881, but uh, if we were using this as a local system, this would just be the server name and any user on the network could go to that URL and could log in. So you see it takes me right in. Uh, there are no plugins to download for DriveDM, so there's no Flash or ActiveX or anything like that. And we use a very simple dashboard view, it's supposed to look a lot like iTunes. Uh, so the user logs in, the navigation is all here on the left, and what happens is over here on the right. So the first thing that it brings me into is the latest changes. I can see all the documents and the spaces and things that were created today. Uh, I can use this view section on the left to view uh, save searches that have been pushed out to me by the administrator. So here I have any invoice created this month. But the most common thing that a user is going to do is going to find a document and they're going to use something like the Mighty Search. And what the Mighty Search does is it, is it goes through a full text search of all the notes, all the text within the documents, all the file names, all everything that's, have to, that's had to do with a document in the system. The Mighty Search will go through it. So, for instance, if I do a search for 123, I find every document with a 123 in it, whether it's in the text or anything like that. Um, you see I can get a quick preview of the document. If I double click it I can open the document up and zoom in and out. Um, I can get a couple of views up here like a thumbnail view or the paned view. Um, and there's a couple of things down here that will apply to a document regardless of where you select it in the system. I have the file room which shows me all my index fields. And you see here we can create unique index fields based off the location of the document or the document type. Also, I have the notes for the document, so I can add a note and view other notes um, for that document. I've got an audit trail, so anything that's happened to that document. Um, also, if I edit that document, which means I check it out and check it back in, I'll see a tab here that's the version control, so I can see the different versions of the document. I can create a workflow for that document. I can share it out to other users, either via link or via an email. I can print it or I can download it. So I can also select more than one document at a time and change the index fields for them here. You'll see also if I select a document I have a thing called a space there and as I start typing it will autocomplete and give me the other spaces that I can assign it to. And the main thing here is that a space is a way for us to organize groups of documents. Think of it like a playlist. So while I can create unlimited unique index fields here for the document, so any invoice that contains a one and maybe that was uh, created this year, or this week, I can search and, and do as many different combinations of index fields that I want to find the documents. But if I wanted to define, for instance, that vendor, B's Beverages, it would be a space. So I have a bunch of different types of spaces. I can search by the type. 
this can all be synced with a third-party ERP system or a student management system or a patient record system or an accounting system. Uh, it can all be synced. And so, for instance, if I want to find a vendor and the name contains a B, uh, I have all my vendors here whose name contains a B. I have B's beverages. And when I open up B's beverages, I see that document. I see all the input, the index fields around B's beverages. I see who has access to B's beverages space. And I also see which region it is. So we can create unique index fields here for the space. I can also create a safe search. So if, let's say if I'm the Northeast Service Controller or the Northeast Accounting Representative, and I want to just have a quick view that gives me all the Northeast vendors, I can save a search there for myself that'll show every time I log in. We also have an inbox here which is typically the most common way that users scan into the system. They'll just swipe their card using drive print or log in with their phone or something and then they'll scan to their inbox and do all the uh, tagging and indexing there. I also have a workflow system here so I can see which workflows are in my inbox. I can claim that workflow and then I can open up and see what the status is and see who sent it to me and see if there are any notes or anything for it. So that's a, a basic couple of ways that a user might use the system. I can find information about a vendor or a student or an employee. Uh, I can find specific documents or I can check a workflow. Um, there's also an iOS app that you could use uh, and if the system was in the cloud or if it was made public you could get to it pretty much from any browser from anywhere. So that's DriveDM. It's very simple to use. Uh, if you want to find out a little bit more about how to customize it, then stay tuned and check out the other videos. So thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the rest of the playlist.